Awesome, so we're rolling. Hi, I'm Nick Wright, and I'm playing the coachman, the palace messenger, and an adult party guest, and I'm 18 years old. Awesome, and you've been working on Cinderella. How long have you guys been working on this for? Um, since it feels like forever, um, but it also feels like we've only had a couple rehearsals. It went by really fast, um, but I believe since October. Okay, cool. And um, awesome. I've heard that you lived in paradise or yeah. live in paradise. Yeah. Okay. And I'm guessing, do you know the state of your home? Yeah. So um, we found out on the second day that our house was gone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's not much left. There's a chimney and there's a barbecue in the back, but that's it. I'm sorry, but um, I mean, it's it's just amazing that you guys, through all of this, are still working on the show. I think yeah. that's really powerful. It's a really good distraction. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, this show, um, it, you said it's a really good distraction. Do you, How do you think you would feel and be right now if you didn't have the show, I guess? It's... I'd probably just be sitting on a couch on my phone, doing nothing, just trying to figure out how to process this. Um, but it really helps being around a lot of other people because a lot of other people are going through the same thing and you can talk your situation through with like a lot of friends and other dancers, so that's nice. That's awesome. And I mean, you said talking through your situation helps, so I mean, if you feel comfortable, would you want to share the day, what happened on Thursday? Yeah, so I was house-sitting for my grandma, so I had a basket of clothes already with me, and I had like my computer and all my schoolwork, so I had that all with me. I was the worst house sitter ever because her house is gone too. Um, but I got a phone call at like eight o'clock and I, my mom was like, hey, like you need to come here, we're evacuating. And it just felt like every other time that we've been evacuated, like, oh, whatever. I'm like, okay, I'll be there soon. And she's like, no, come now. This is like serious. And I was like, okay. So I packed up all my stuff and left in like five minutes. And as soon as I stepped outside, the sky was like bright crimson red. Um, anyway, so I start to head down to my house and it takes two hours to go like four miles down Penn's. And by the time I'm getting close, my parents are like, just go like turn, turn and go to Chico because like we can't, like we already left. So I turn and I try to go down Skyway, but they turn me around and then I try to go Durham Pence and they turn me around. And then I tried to go uh, the freeway and then they turned me around. So I ended up, they told me they were gonna take me to Yuba. So I pulled over and I like called my mom and I was super upset thinking I would be stuck in Yuba without my family. And then we found a way through. So I went through like all of the cities around Chico. So Willows, Biggs, um, all of those cities. And yeah, that was just like the scariest moment of my life is just being in all these cities that I've never heard of and starting to run out of gas and my cards, my credit cards weren't working, my debit card wasn't working to get gas. So I eventually found cash, which is good. Um, yeah, but that's like the scariest moment of my life was just not knowing when I'd see my family again. And do you have a place to stay at the moment? What's your, yeah. how are you, what's happening right now? So we're staying with family friends who are also a part of the ballet. And I guess we're gonna stay there until we can find a place to rent and rebuild our house. I'm planning to move down to the Bay Area or San Diego in January. I have a couple places to stay um, down there. But I think like I've been wanting to go to San Diego for a long time and this is like the perfect reason to go. I can get out of the way of everything. I can start to get a full-time job and be more independent because I've been wanting that since I graduated. So I'm trying to find some light in the situation. That's yeah. amazing. Um, one last thing. So I know that you are in school right now too. You yeah. just graduated high school. So could you say what's happening with school right now? I heard that they might be shut down or what's your school state? So I don't know what the state of Butte is right now, but I've had one teacher contact everyone and say, hey, like schoolwork is the last of your worries right now. Like, don't worry about it. She said that she might be um, like, all of my teachers are super accommodating to the situation. I had my English teacher say like, um, yeah, there's this 6,000 word essay you need to write, but if you are in this situation, let me know. So I emailed him and he said, okay, so you have a B in the class, I'll bump it up to an A, and like, don't worry about passing the class, like, you'll pass, so. And all the teachers are very different, like, but they're all being accommodating and really kind. Yeah. That's good. 
Well, I mean, is there anything else you'd like to share? We're, now we're just collecting stories of hope, resilience, or in tragedy too. Yeah. So if you have any hope for maybe peers or something you want to say, that'd be... So even, this is something that's been on my mind, even the people that have not been directly affected by the fire, like their house hasn't burnt down or their home hasn't burnt down, they're so, the fire's affected everyone in the community and you have a right to be upset or stressed and you don't have to suppress that just because your situation is less than someone else's. Beautiful words. Thank you so much, Thank Nick. Thank you. Awesome. And break the leg tonight. Thank you.